it's indeed an honor for me to join you all for the sword cutting ceremony. Dr. Anderson, is this sword cutting or sword turning? I, you, you are the English people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's a very important uh, milestone in our journey to addressing the accommodation deficits that has plagued the university for some time now. And it is particularly intriguing because very often when we think about the accommodation deficit, we are thinking mostly about the undergraduate students. We don't often give so much thought to graduate students. And so today it is indeed very special. And this is in line with the university's vision to attain a world-class status. It's also very necessary for us to tackle existing infrastructure deficits while ensuring that we incorporate new technologies in our bid to create an intellectual climate that supports our vision of becoming a research intensive university. Professor Ntia Mwabeidu talked about the role of graduate students, particularly PhD students, in our bid to become a research intensive university. As a university, our first strategic priority is research. And as Vice Chancellor, my first key strategic objective is to reinvigorate impactful research in the sciences and humanities. This is vital for the growth and development of our institution and nation. In order for us to attract more PhD students, it's very important that we focus on increasing the stock of residential facilities on our campuses thereby giving our students an opportunity to study in a congenial environment. So hopefully this PhD residential building project will help the University of Ghana become the hub for PhD training. As Prof. Santia Mwabeidu said, nationally, but I hope that not just nationally, but in the sub-region as well. I think that we are well poised to take that position. This is the first phase. It is my expectation that in subsequent phases, we will make provision for childcare and other gender-based amenities that will fit the needs of the 21st century PhD students. This will in turn help us support the training and development of these students and provide opportunities for producing critical thinkers who are ready to proffer solutions for existing challenges. We heard the contractor speak. The contractor promised to deliver. As for that one, I'm not in doubt that the contractor would deliver. What I wanted to hear was a time frame within which the delivery will happen. Uh, because we don't want this to go on and on and on. Uh, within, what, 12 to 18 months, I hope to be back here to dedicate, this time will it be a dedication or, or cutting of tape, this, this time we'll cut a tape, okay, to <laughs> cut the tape for the use of the first phase. So let me take this opportunity to applaud the efforts of all individuals and institutions who have invested time and effort to ensure that this project becomes a reality. I'd like to thank Professor Yaa Ntia Mwabeidu for her efforts over the years. She narrated how this has been a long-term dream, and today we are beginning to see the realization of that. We thank all the um, institutions which have supported us in our graduate programs and in developing our faculty. And I think Carnegie Corporation deserves special mention in this regard. I thank Director of PADA and Director of PDMSD and their staff who have taken a keen interest in this project since we started uh, talking seriously about getting this to happen. And I would like to thank all persons who have embraced my vision of tackling the student accommodation challenge. Uh, thank you all for coming and uh, as I said, I hope that within 12 to 18 months time, 
we will be back here so that we can put the first phase to use. Thank you very much. Yeah. So now give us the details of the what we are expecting here in this building. Okay. As you can see, it's a three-level structure. That to say, ground, first, and second. Each floor has or accommodates 20 bedrooms. So the three levels will be 60 bedrooms. If you complete, it's going to be like this, having 60 bedrooms. And the ground floor has an office for the manager of the facility and also the potter's lodge. The first floor has a library or a common area for all. <laughs> each room has, more, each room is an end suit. That's to say it has a sleeping space, a kitchenette, a sitter, and its own washroom, and a balcony. So, in a nutshell, that's, that's, that's all about, 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 about the building. And let's talk about outside. What do we do expect outside the building? Outside. So they're going to be car park. Car park. Each, 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 it's a project. And after the project, you have, you have, to, you have to expect about four blocks. Four, four blocks of them. So that's why you see the plot is big like that. So after we finish this first phase, you'll build a second phase, second, third phase, and a fourth space. Am I getting the indication that the second and the third phase they are similar structure but just build that? As you can see it's, it's the same thing. The same thing. But just that the, the rationale is you get money from the first phase to build the second phase. You know, we don't have details when you are starting you'll be starting the second phase yet. No the 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 <laughs> the, the strength of the second phase is dependent on the plow back from the first phase. And this is what you are expecting to complete uh, four, in 14? In 14 months. So 20 on each floor, 60 bedrooms for the first phase. Thank you so much. So briefly, yes, tell us, what do you make of this project? Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Christiane Edu, graduate student president. And it's an honor for us today to come and grace the occasion of the sword cutting for a graduate student at the phase for accommodation. It is indeed a stride in the history of the association that today there is going to be a hope that the accommodation deficit on campus is getting resolved. And we would want to applaud management for their continuous effort to help us resolve this challenge. The University of Ghana has been the hope and has been the the, the lead and the pace that are in graduate studies. And so if there is a challenge and they are helping to resolve it, we think that it is the, it is the best way to go and it's a step in the right direction. And do you expect more of the PhD students patronizing this um, building? Uh, certainly, of course, we expect that they, they patronize the facility because there is a deficit. And even we don't even think that this is going to resolve all the challenge, but it will help in a way.